I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be. And so for the last two days now, President Trump's been walking back from that stunning statement, trying to explain his failure to hold Putin accountable. Now, Ellen Morrow joins us now from Washington. So, Ellen, what is the president saying today? Well, as you said, Andrew, this is the second time in as many days that we've heard President Trump trying to uh, walk back to clean up that statement from Helsinki. Yesterday, Trump said he simply misspoke. And this evening, he's taking it even further by saying in the clearest way we've heard from him yet that he blames Vladimir Putin for election meddling. Here's what Trump had to say. Do you hold him personally responsible? Well, I would, because he's in charge of the country, just like I consider myself to be responsible for things that happen in this country. So certainly, as the leader of a country, you would have to hold him responsible, yes. But he denies it. So if you believe U.S. intelligence agencies, is Putin lying to you? I don't want to get into whether or not he's lying. I can only say that I do have confidence in our intelligence agencies. Now, a couple of things to point out. Trump does not say flat out that he blames the Russian president, period, full stop. Instead, he uses that more general language that Putin is responsible for what happens in Russia in the same way that Trump is responsible here in the U.S. It's also, of course, noteworthy that Trump refused to say whether or not he thinks Putin is lying when he denied the meddling accusations. Now, Trump backers and some Republican lawmakers may be satisfied with this, Andrew, but it's extremely unlikely the president's critics will be. And, and even though Trump was seemingly trying to continue his walk back, we also did hear him say he thinks, and this is perhaps unsurprising, that the news conference went well. That's right. And remember, we've had two days of the president trying to distance himself from what he said, saying he didn't mean to say it. Then in this interview tonight, he also went back to a favorite theme of his, blaming what he calls the fake news. Here's what he said. I will tell you, I, I don't know what the fuss is all about. I think we did extremely well, and uh, I think the press makes up the fuss. Look, it's fake news. But they, we, they, the, the press covered the substance and the wording of that press conference accurately. I don't accurately. care what they covered. They, don't, they didn't cover my meeting. The important thing, frankly, was the meeting that lasted for two and a half hours or almost two and a half hours. Now, the problem with that is that the media was not informed until later what was even discussed in that meeting, and the details are still uh, quite scant. And it raises a question. If the U.S. president thinks the news conference went so well, why is he been trying to walk it back ever since? There does seem to be a disconnect here. Does the president actually believe what he's saying today or what he said on Monday, since he says that was a great news conference, Andrew? Ellen Morrow in Washington. Thanks very much. Meanwhile, we are learning more tonight about the case that federal prosecutors are building against a 29-year-old Russian national. They believe she cozied up to American officials in order to infiltrate the U.S. political system. Maria Butina came to Washington as a graduate student, but the FBI says that was little more than a cover for her work with the Russian government. As a covert agent, prosecutors say she gained access to some of the top members of the NRA and other conservative groups. This is an all-Russian public organization. We uh, promote gun rights. A prosecutor telling a judge that Butina even allegedly offered to exchange sex for political access all the while communicating with Russian intelligence. But still, her attorney argued she wasn't a spy. She's not an agent of the Russian government, the Russian Federation. She's innocent of the charges brought against her. The judge ordered Butina to remain in jail until her next hearing next week.